And it's hard to think of a better example of somebody with confused identity issues than Sam Smith. And the Americans are going to take one look at that video of a geezer on his knees with God knows what going into his mouth and go, now you're all right. <laughs> Welcome to the Showbiz Showdown. I'm JJ, and this is the programme where we take the biggest debate or question or topic of the week, and we tear it apart, and I come for the verdict at the end. You might agree, you might not agree, but that's what the comment section is for, so put all your thoughts in there. Now, joining me on the panel today, in the blue corner, honoured to have him, an absolute legend of showbiz, the most connected man in British showbiz, I'd say, son showbiz editor, Simon Boyle. Welcome. Welcome <laughs> And equally, in the red corner, making her debut, another showbiz legend, reporter, journalist, and Super Spurs fan, Lucy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so, today's big question. Is the UK music industry going down the toilet? I only ask because Noel Gallagher certainly seems to think so. Speaking in an interview, he said, music has become quite fractured and chart music is dominated by pop. Pop is all right if the pop stars are cool. Sadly, the pop stars of today are idiots. Does Noel Gallagher have a point? He's, he's been in the industry quite a while, you know, Oasis, he's had some success. Uh, but where is David Bowie? Where is uh, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones? We've only got Adele left really as, as a proper icon of British music or a McFly doing really well for us. Are, are they the new uh, the Beatles? I've no idea. So do you think Noel Gallagher is right? Is the British music industry in the toilet, Simon Boyle. You dress like a dad, but you've got very cool music <laughs> taste. So, <laughs> um, Noel's rarely wrong. He he uh, he does tend to shoot from the hip, and that's uh, that's a good thing. We need a bit more of that in showbiz, to be totally honest. In a world where everyone's scared to offend, um, there's some stats that say that the music industry absolutely isn't dead, in the sense that record sales are flying at the moment from the British uh, from the big British names: Harry Styles, Ed Sheeran, Adele, as you mentioned, Louis Capaldi's flying at the moment. Mm -hmm. But what you've seen in the uh, last couple of years is a huge chasm between the very small number of people who are really, really making it, who are dominating sales figures by hundreds and hundreds of thousands of units ahead of down here, where it's next to nothing. It's fractured. People have a hit and then they disappear or a couple of hits, but they're all... And the really big issue at the heart of all of this is the total lack of identity for a huge number of those artists. When you've got a record like Dua Lipa's last album, which was a great pop record, but was written by about 42 people, you start going, well, actually, who is this person? Who am I listening to? What am I buying into? Do I know anything about Dua Lipa? Am I engaging with what she's saying? Is there any sort of message to this? The Gallaghers, prime example, 90s, you knew exactly what they stood for. I mean, they mostly stood for themselves, but they did it aggressively, they did it with attitude, and they did it with a sort of a, a style that made you want to buy into it. I don't know what I'm buying into with your average Tim Pop pop star these days. And to be honest, they might be gone so quickly in five minutes' time that it won't matter. Compelling argument. Lucy, do you agree? Do you think you you know what Noel Gallagher means, or should you stop crying his heart out? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want you to sing it. No, 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 you don't, nobody wants that. <laughs> Isn't it really interesting what you said, but why do we need to have a story behind the music? Why can't we just enjoy the music? Why do we need to know that they've been through X, Y, and Z? Um, also with TikTok, we've got to talk about, it's, it's, that's the new streaming service. That is the new thing is that artists go, I've been successful now because they're getting money through TikTok, they're getting huge exposure through TikTok. Um, the whole music industry has changed since Noel started, and it's not just changed a little bit. It's monumentally different, and talent's di different as well. These artists now are doing their own synth thing and text, whatever it is, all the tech stuff. They're doing all themselves. It's just a different industry. But is Noel not just a man out of out of time? Is that a thing? He hasn't had a top ten single for his last. Um, like 15 records or something, and his album, his albums do well, yeah. but his singles don't do anything. Well, you have to be realistic about who's buying singles and who's consuming singles. I mean, adults consume albums. <laughs> adults. And eight-year-olds consume singles. <laughs> and, and that's fine, of course it is. So, so Noel's solo records or High Flying Birds records uh, in the recent years have all hit the, hit the top of the charts, but they've been consumed in a different sort of way as a body of work by, by grown-ups. When he made these comments, he's actually talking about Sam Smith. And it's hard to think of a better example of somebody with confused identity issues than Sam Smith. Well, I'm going to pause you there. We're going to come to Sam Smith a little bit later. But before we get to Sam Smith, do you think an Oasis reunion is needed then? If, if music is well, I, I, getting weaker, do you think we need to get them back together? Well, he can't be critical about music right now if he's not stepping up to the plate. He's got a voice. His brother's got a voice. They're incredible artists that are healthy and they're able to speak. Mm. So get on stage and sing. You know, I know that Liam's obviously had this back operation, but... I just think you can't be critical. Just, just you know, put your money where your mouth, and it'll make them a lot of money. 
wouldn't it? Yeah. Just go back on tour, bring us what we wanted, and absolutely put your put the UK back on the map then if you think it's so rubbish. Well, it's more likely than ever before, definitely as well. I and mean, we revealed recently that Noel is going through a divorce, which, you know, has a, an uncanny way of triggering people into doing things they didn't fancy <laughs> before. Um, but also, there's been a real softening in Noel's language towards Liam in recent months. Uh, he's complimented his most recent music, which is astonishing. I mean, the sea change from, I've never heard it, I couldn't care less, to <laughs> actually it's really good stuff. And Liam he's said when he was recovering amazing. from his operation, he sat and watched all his old videos back. So perhaps this trip down memory lane, nostalgia thing has gone, oh, mate, it let's feels, get a couple of million. It feels more of a possibility than it has done for a very long time. And Noel's take on it seems to be now never say never, rather than, you know. But how would they yeah. be writing new music now? Because that, that, that will then be putting Noel on the spot. You said it was rubbish. There you go. 2023, what can you do? They, they might be out of touch. It might well, be old-fashioned. They might be. But Noel, according to the charts, he may have a point. Because all of these albums are still going strong in the top 20 album chart. At number 10, Elton John, this was his greatest hits album. It spent 276 weeks in the charts. It was released in 2017. It's still there. Um, Abba Gold, I know they're not British, but they've spent 1,086 weeks in the charts. Or over 20 years, if you want to put it that way. Um, Arctic Monkeys, great album, AM, 493 weeks in the charts. It's at number 15 currently. That's 10 years ago. So maybe, Boyle, maybe you're right. Maybe Noel, you and Noel have a point. Well, I mean, Queen would still be in there. Yeah, you're uh, right. Queen's all, at number 17. All sorts of like, those heritage acts that hang around for generations. And if you look at each, each year, the annual kind of Spotify streaming lists or com compilation charts uh, at the end of every year, they're always littered with these 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 prestige. Go to 2020, go 10 years from now, Harry will be in there. Adele will be in there. Do you not think? Yeah, but they're the they're couple setting that, legacies. They're the few that might might stand the test of time. But really what you're doing is affirming what I said at the very beginning, is that we've only got a very small number who have the identity to follow them through. You don't remember Tim Pop Pop acts because they didn't stand out to you. You might remember the chew. You might hear in a nightclub and go, I loved this. And that's it. <laughs> You're not going back over there. I want to be in a nightclub with you when you do there, that. Over their back catalogue, yeah. <laughs> well, you did touch on Sam Smith and um, Noel had a say. He, he's not a fan, he's not a fan. So on Sam Smith, Noel Gallagher said, just look at him. Now, obviously, Noel has misgendered Sam Smith because Sam Smith goes by they and them. And that's very naughty, Noel. So Sam Smith is they, but I think that Noel's referring to this video from Sam Smith. I need a lover. I need a lover. I need a lover. Okay, so that is <laughs> that was the video. Um, but are we focusing too much on Sam Smith for, for their video and rather than their actual music, Lucy? I think them, I, I really like the song. I think it's very. Sam, I think it's very poppy. It's great on, on the internet. And the video sh was quite shocking. I mean, I tried to run it on a show and they said, you know, it's a bit too risque. Sam can do what they want to do, right? The, uh, I think that also you want to be yourself. Sam wants to be themselves and wants to kind of just push push the boundaries. Um, I bet you Sam doesn't, doesn't care less about what Noel thinks. Well, is Sam Smith ruining the British music industry? Absolutely not. Surely Sam's putting the British music industry on the map. 30 million songs, singles worldwide, Sam's sold. The old Sam Smith, yes. I guess we'll see what this new album does. Yeah, I, I think that if you are a pop star, I think it was, was it Simon Cowell that famously said, any news is good news. Look at the articles about that music video. Yeah. It got everyone talking, so it had an effect. Simon, what do you make of Sam Smith's music? Forget the video for a second, just focusing on purely on their voice and their, and their yeah. songs and their writing. I mean, number one, Sam could call themselves what they like. That's, mm -hmm. that's sort of now started to detract from the music itself. I mean, it's become a sideshow. The, the, the circus around the pronouns and the, and the, and the name and the, the identity that goes with it. Oh, you're the monkeys and now there's anybody else, really, yeah. except for Sam. I mean, it's, I mean, it's <laughs> having the, the negative impact, in my view, of... Uh, hammering the uh, the Brit Awards into into getting rid of gender uh, categories, which I think was a mistake and was 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 damaging to women in the music industry who were already underrepresented. Um, the first record was terrific. It said something. It had an identity. It was out of nowhere. Beautiful voice, plainly a really well-crafted piece of work. Uh, the next one was far, far less so. And more recently, with this video and the lead into what he's doing next, there's a real feeling within the industry that actually the big problem you might have is whether or not the American market no, market no longer find it palatable. And if you want to be considered in, in the in the um, 
in the sphere that um, Lucy talked about before with your Ed Sheerans and your Adele's and stuff, you can't write America off. And the Americans are going to take one look at that video of a geezer on his knees with God knows what going into his mouth and go, now nah, you're all right. One thing I they never keep, understand the, the about Brits, that. The Brits can keep that. <laughs> and that could, be, that could be the end. And the one thing and, I don't understand about that is, right, if, if, there's only one thing there's loads of <laughs> but music TV is still a thing and they still play music videos you know on, online and on TV if you can't play it anywhere then surely actually Sam sh shouldn't think actually this can't go out on TV so why have I done it do, do you know what I mean well as you say for the press right and everyone's talking about it on YouTube it's had 16 million views I believe that, that just that the proper video despite everywhere else it's been shown with the clips that you can show in some places so Maybe Sam Smith, mission accomplished. Maybe it's interesting. It's an interesting argument. It That's is. why we're here. <laughs> but um, in 2015, Noel did say Sam Smith just stands there like Boy George in a coma. So I think Noel actually, I think you've just got an issue with Sam Smith full stop, mate. It's not just his, not just their most recent stuff. It's Sam Smith full stop. But let's move on because we know what Noel thinks, but I want to hear what you guys think. I'm calling you a guy. I hope I've not missed pronounced you there. Uh, <laughs> the UK music scene has made a name for itself over the years for being eclectic through Britpop. Indie, grime, drill. I know you're a big fan of that. Uh, <laughs> but let's listen to some of these artists, and you, I want you to both tell me hot or not. So first up, one of the biggest UK dance tracks of previous years, Baddest of Them All by Eliza Rose, and Interplanetary Criminal. I've never heard of them, but this is them. She's a bad mom. Okay, so hot or not? Not. Yeah, I'd have to agree on that. Totally devoid of identity. Doesn't stand. Doesn't stand out along the litany of other very similar sounding tracks. Lucy. L lukewarm. Not, not. I won't be hearing that again. Lukewarm. <laughs> God. It's called hot or not. Not lukewarm. Hot or not. Jeez. All right. And <laughs> next up, Bad Boy Chiller Crew. Who again? I've never. Oh, maybe I'm just too old. I've never heard of these people. Yeah. But this is Bad Boy Chiller Crew. Okay, that was Don't You Worry About Me. Lucy, hot or not? Not my thing, not. Simon? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't insult me. But we're not target audience, are we? Uh, oh. No, but when you get to, I mean, look, we, truly great music is universal. Truly great pop music can stand the test of time and span generations. This nonsense. <laughs> I refer you back to eight-year-old girls. <laughs> well, let me ask you, Simon, are you familiar with hyperpop? It sounds like an anime cartoon, but sounds apparently like a it's a genre of music that started in 2010 and its popularity is booming because of TikTok. So yeah, you're at fault for this one, Lucy. Oh, is it the fast, is it ones that are sped up? Um, yeah, apparently. Let's have a listen. This is um, Rina Sawayama with This Hell. <laughs> So there you have it. To me, it sounds like chipmunks. It's it's not for me, but Simon, fan, hyper hyper pop. She is shortlisted to potentially appear at Eurovision on um, uh, for Britain uh, arena. Uh, wow, that is which they've not said, but it's, she's she's somebody who's met with the the organisers, and that is where that nonsense belongs. <laughs> So can I just jump on the Eurovision bandwagon, right? You can I jump, think, jump on anything you like. I think, right, that Sam Ryder helped the whole country out, feeling happy, and it was amazing that everyone watched it. The Ukraine thing was incredible. That it was just exactly what Eurovision was supposed to be. When it first started, it was supposed to be for war, um, kind of torn countries to get together, and it kind of felt like it was. Eurovision again, and Sam Ryder is the nicest person on the planet apart from you two. And <laughs> I just think he made music really fun again, exciting. And his music is everywhere now. It was on Love Island last night. Yeah. I just think he, he's not probably going to be a new Bowie or a Harry Styles, but he's made everyone happy for perhaps a little he short He competed time. in a competition that's supposed to be for the European nations and has people like Australia and Israel in it. <laughs> it's a no from me. Now, finally, uh, Wet Leg. Well, the, the Isle of Wight indie duo, have a listen to them. They're fantastic. <laughs> Okay, hot or not? Hot. Hot. Simon, come on, Simon. Simon, come on. Simon. I've got an issue with this. I'll tell you what it is. Go there on. There is a tragic dearth 
of uh, guitar bands in the UK. So I desperately want to get on board with this. Yeah. Uh, but when the best rock and roll we've got is Wet Leg in the 1975, we've lost our way. <laughs> but, the, but principally, I believe in the idea. It's made, look, it's not for me, but I haven't got an issue with it. And I totally understand that they have... They stand for something, they mean something, they've got something about them, and I know loads of people are really into it. They're the darlings of the critics as well, which really puts me off. As soon as as soon as soon critics bore on, oh, you <laughs> must listen to this, uh, I, I, I start running a mile. But look, they, they're all right, yeah, hot, hot. Isn't yeah. there something terribly middle class about a rock band having a song called Shays Long? No? <laughs> you that, can't even say <laughs> it. I can't even say it properly. I go, that's how working class I am. I have one question, what, what do you love? Rip pop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the bell. So the debate is over. Um, the question was, the big question, is UK music going down the toilet? Lucy, you said? Absolutely not. And Simon, you said? <laughs> <laughs> Stat man over There's here. Hope. <laughs> There's hope. Well, thanks for joining me, but ultimately, it's my show. I make the decisions here. And the verdict is, Simon Ball, you are the winner. UK music is going down the toilet. In fact, it's been flushed. It's terrible. Where's our Beyonce? Where's our Taylor Swift? Where are the old Beatles? We need someone better than Harry Styles. We need someone better than Ed Sheeran. Sheeran's doing pretty well. He's doing great. He's made a lot of money. But I don't love him. Uh, George Ezra? Do you think that's a real pop star? Is he rock and roll? No, he's not. And wet leg, you're going to be dry leg because I don't suspect that in five years you'll still be around. Sorry, that's the way it is. Now, you may disagree with me. If you do disagree, comment below. Our American viewers, I'm sure you're going to agree with me that UK music is now trash. Like and subscribe and we'll see you again next time. <laughs> well, I can't <laughs>